And now, I'm honored to welcome to NJPAC once again, the inimitable Philip Glass. So, first and foremost, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us to have this conversation. Um, as you can read for yourselves in the program notes, um, Philip Glass has numerous awards, accomplishments, including Academy, Golden Globe, Grammy nominations. But um, I would just like to acknowledge one of his most recent accomplishments. In October of 2010, Philip Glass received a Lifetime Achievement Award in Opera from the National Endowment for National Endowment for the Arts. So I'd like to congratulate him. Thank you, thank you. The first thing I want to talk about is definitions and labels. Um, as recently as June 2010, a Los Angeles Times article referred to your music as minimalist style, and a label I understand you don't necessarily care for. Since I first heard you perform, which was in Houston about 1984, 85, that was 25 years ago, I've heard your music referred to as minimalist, new music, contemporary, classical. So would you tell us what you call your music and why? Well, when people ask me what kind of music I write, I usually say I, I write theater music. And that has the virtue of actually being true. Uh, I would say 70 to 80 percent of the music is connected to dance, to film, to, uh, to theater, to opera. In other words, uh, there, and, and this is an interesting uh, point because uh, I would say there are two kind of composers, the ones uh, of, of what we call concert music mm -hmm. and the people who write theater music and they very often aren't the same people. Uh, there are not a lot of operas by Brahms. Yes. And uh, there are not a lot of symphonies by Verdi. I had to just pick two classes, and, and it's kind of like that. Uh, uh, and yeah, if you do a lot of, if you get drawn into one, you tend to, to do that. And uh, though I've actually done, I've done a lot of both, but, but I, I, I find I'm, I'm running more thinking about um, who my collaborators are, if I'm working with a, a dance person or a poet or a writer or a filmmaker. And so that uh, immediately uh, defines the, the way the work process goes. What's happening is there's a young generation of performers now in their 20s and 30s who are playing that music I wrote in the 70s. Whoa. And they really play it well. Wow. Thanks. And so that music is there. Yes. And, and they're playing it. And there was a group in... Italy, and they said they wanted to do a whole concert, and I didn't even go to the first time they did it, and then I didn't. Then they finally said, look, aren't you gonna come and hear us play? So I finally said, yeah, I'm gonna come and hear you play. And, and they, could, they played, and they said, well, how did we do? And I said, well, you played it better than we did. And they thought I was kidding, but I wasn't. Because wow. you have to remember, in 1970, we didn't know how to play the music yet. Wow. But by the year 2005, the performance practice had caught up with the compositional practice. Yes. Now, if you think about it, and look, you, you, you just had Bill T. Jones here. You, if you ask Bill T. the same thing, uh, you can't, uh, to start to invent a new language, whether it's in dance or in painting or in film or in music, it requires a different performance mm -hmm. technique to do it. Or to put it another way, if you could play my music the same way you play Beethoven, it wouldn't be, it, it, it wouldn't really be new, would it? That's right. Uh, the reason we have a different performance technique is because the actual technique of the music requires it. Yes. Now, going back to 1969, 70, 71, 72, when many of us were writing this music, we didn't know how to play it. And uh, some of the music went on for hours. Mm -hmm. And it, over time, we, we, we uh, independently and, and sometimes working together, uh, one of the, I always talk about Meredith because she, invented a vocal technique, which no one has been able to do yes. except her. Yes. Uh, but when you hear that, let's take her for example, instead of talking about me. When you listen to that, uh, it's a way of singing that, that fit the music that she was writing. Yes. Uh, so, so when I heard these fellows, in, there was mostly guys in, in Rome playing the music, 
And they said, you play it better than, than we did. What I meant, to, what I was trying to tell them, which I, I hadn't really explained, was that, that when we were playing that music, we didn't know how to play it. We didn't know what it sounded like. Uh, 25, 30 years later, they were playing it with the benefit of everything that happened in between. And I listened to it with great pleasure, to tell you the truth. Wow. Because I said, oh, I wish we had played it like that <laughs> in 1969 when we couldn't do it. What's the interesting thing, Brock, is that the, the young composers now are both, when I, get, they, I have a, a studio in New York, and I usually have one or two young people working as apprentices, because one thing, I don't, I'm not that good with the computer, but what's very useful is when I write a piece with pencil and paper to put it in the computer. Yes. And there are a lot of things that we can do with it in the, once it's in the computer, but uh, for me to put it in the computer would be a total waste of time. I can get a 26-year-old guy who just came out of Yale, or, <laughs> and they can put it in in half an hour. It can take me all day. Yes. <laughs> so, but one of the things that uh, what, the, the, was so interesting, I love these young, the young composers, now, the young men and women. They're good at playing the piano, and they are also good at the technology. In my generation, we were good at one or the other, usually. We yes. didn't really grow up knowing them both, and the young people now are doing them both. And what that means is that this next generation, I mean the people in their 20s and early 30s now, I don't mean people that are 40 or 50, but those people, uh, they are going to be writing a music that's very different from what we wrote. Yes. And it's very exciting. I yes. just want to be, I want to live long enough to hear it, because <laughs> I think it's going to, I think we're going to, there's going to be a great, um, how can I say, I think there's going to be an explosion of new music.